who moved my cheese. A lot of educators may have had that. It was used in the education system a lot. And um, it was very good. We don't like our cheese moved a bit. But this morning, we're just going to twist that cheese all around. But right now is the time for the message. And strangely enough, it's in Matthew, and it concerns the birth of Christ. It's Matthew 1, 18 through 25. This is where Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what she is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will, con will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. That we've read twice now this morning, one from different versions, but they all say the same thing. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a virgin, and came to save us. <coughs> Excuse me. In the morning, most of us will be giving and receiving presents. The wife and I decided not to give each other presents this year, and we've both cheated. I'm sure that most of you have gotten presents and will get some. Well, when you think about the most wonderful present you ever received, was it ever a time that it was just the right thing, the perfect gift, a gift that warmed your heart and soul, a gift that you said, just what I was hoping for and really meant it? When you reflect, it's probably not going to be a material thing. This morning, watching Faith come in, was a gift to me. It's a gift to our church. Those are the kind of gifts that I like because they mean so much. As we see a lost person come in and find Jesus Christ, that's a gift. Those are the gifts I like. Those mean so much. But sometimes material things have some value. A story about an elderly couple, they lived alone, Pastor didn't think they had any children. He was visiting with them, and they were sharing some of their memories as they showed him around their very small home. On a mantel in the living room sat a funny-looking green dish. It was really rough-looking. In faded black letters written by a child's hands were the words, Love, Joy. And what is this, asked the pastor. Tears immediately filled the woman's eyes. She said, That's a candy dish our son made for us in school when he was six years old. We lost him in a drowning accident when he was eight. Friends, I can't read that without tears coming to my eyes. As it turned out, Joy was her only child. There's not enough money in the world to buy that funny-looking green candy dish. It's one of a kind. It never can be replaced. The value of this gift goes beyond anything the world can offer these people. Our scripture today, though, speaks of a one-of-a-kind gift. It's a gift that goes beyond anything that the world can offer any of us. It's a never-to-be-repeated, amazing gift that God has given to everyone who will receive it. It's told to us in very simple terms because we do not understand complicated things. Oh, we try to make simple things complicated, but we don't do good at understanding them. You may have heard this verse before. It's the most memorized verse in the Christian world. John 3.16 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the gospel. For God so loved the world. You know, the world that we find to be cruel and hard sometimes, the world that so many horrible things happen in, says here, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, not whosoever by race, by creed, nationality, age, sex, whosoever, believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a one-of-a-kind gift that is given to everyone. But the problem is, deep within our heart, there lingers some doubts as to our acceptability to a holy God. We each one have those doubts. You can say you don't, but you, if you get in that quiet moment when you're truly honest with yourself, you'll find that you do. We find that we're just unworthy to be loved by a holy, righteous, almighty God. But God proved that he does love us because he came to us through a stable, to some very humble folks like Mary and Joseph. Not important people, but very humble people, very ordinary people. Abby and I were talking on the way this morning about people in our area, and I said, I love them. And I said, I think I love them because they're country folks. And you know, that's the absolute truth of it. We are humble, and we're not highfalutin. We're humble country folks. Well, this is what God came to earth through, Mary and Joseph. And that lets me believe that such a God can love me. When I come to unwrap that gift, I receive two presents. I receive Jesus and Emmanuel. The name Jesus translates, means Savior. In Jesus, God has given us the one who saves. That's what the word Jesus means, Savior. This Savior was born in a barn, condemned to a cross. He can understand the trials and difficulties that are in our lives. The name Emmanuel, that means God is with us. In Jesus, he's come to be present in all of us. God is with us. We know that we have the Holy Spirit upon salvation. God is with us. The manger and the cross give strong witness. But Jesus told his followers, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. John 14, 18. The gift of God's presence is the ultimate perfect gift that fulfills the deepest longings of our hearts. That takes that doubt and moves it away. That takes that insecurity and makes us secure. That is what we get when we accept the gift from God of Jesus. The gift Matthew speaks of is the perfect gift. Sometimes we long for it without even knowing it. It's the fulfillment of our deepest hopes, our dreams. It's the arrival of God in our midst. The concluding vision of this fulfillment that we have with the birth that we're celebrating is found in Revelations 21, 3 and 4. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. In other words, when God is with us, there's perfect peace, and the longings of our hearts are fulfilled. We glimpse just a little of that in this Christmas worship. Our hearts are open and expectant. We focus intently upon the coming birth of Jesus Christ. This is what it means when God says that he loves the world so much that he gave his only son. And all we have to do is believe in his mighty name to be saved. That's your Christmas gift this morning, and it's from God. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that your words fall upon fertile ground, Father, that your words fall upon hearts that need to be reassured of your love. Move away the doubts 
the anger, the fear. I pray, Father, that your words comfort each of us. As we go about our life, as we see some of the misery that's in this world, that we're comforted to know that one day there will be no more death, there will be no more misery, and you will wipe every tear from every eye. Father, I thank you for my gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. And I give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
come, let us rejoice. Rejoice that God's plan was unfolded just as it was told by the prophets years before Mary and Joseph were given the news by the angel. This was no accident. It was part of a plan that was much greater. It had purpose. It had grace and love written all over it. That's why it was a night to remember. journey was long and hard for this young couple as their travel brought them to Bethlehem. There was no room for them in the inn. The only room for this exhausted mother was a stable. It wasn't much, but at least it was shelter, and in this most unlikely place, Jesus left his throne in heaven and came to earth on a silent and holy night.
In this little town of Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph gave them the name Jesus, just as the angel had instructed. This took place to fulfill what the Lord said through the prophet Isaiah. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
The night Jesus came was and still is a night to remember. It should be a continuous reminder that Jesus came to save the world from sin. Let his call to leave everything be the life we want to live as we focus on what is really important this Christmas season. The shopping, the presents, the Christmas parties are all fun and blessings we can enjoy. But don't let those earthly possessions get in the way of our call to go and tell everyone that Jesus Christ is born. Let the celebration continue this season and every day as we proclaim joy to the world, the Lord is come.